In this video lesson, we are going to explore the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the SCM on the right side of the body. Our cadaver is lying supine. We are looking from lateral to medial and somewhat from anterior to posterior. This is the right side anterolateral neck region here. For context, the shoulder is here, the clavicle is located right here. We can see the mandible up above over here. The sternocleidomastoid is said to have two heads, a sternal head that attaches onto the manubrium of the sternum and a clavicular head that attaches onto the medial one-third of the clavicle. So this is the sternal head here and this is the clavicular head here. And they usually join by the clavicular head coming into the posterior side of the sternal head about one third of the way up the neck. We have an interesting anomaly here and that is that normally there is a very clear gap between the sternal and clavicular head. But in this cadaver, there is no gap. There is both fibrous tissue filling in the gap. And when we cut into this fibrous tissue a bit more, we found muscular tissue. So there really is one continuous myofascial attachment of SCM along the sternum and clavicle. The SCM runs superiorly, laterally, and posteriorly and its superior attachment is onto the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So we have sterno, clido, mastoid. But it also has a very broad, thin but broad, attachment along the lateral one half of the superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. If I rotate the head a bit to the left, to the opposite side, we can better see how wide the SCM is here on its cranial attachment. And indeed, in an older classic textbook by Kapanji, the SCM is called the sternocleidomasto-occipitalis muscle for this broad occipital bone attachment. So we have the SCM going from the manubrium of the sternum the medial one-third of the clavicle, the two heads blend together, one common belly running up superiorly, laterally, posteriorly, and attaching onto the mastoid process of the temporal bone, as well as the superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. A note about this direction, it's a diagonal direction, it is not purely vertical, it is certainly not purely horizontal. It is crossing cervical spinal joints in the lower and middle and even upper cervical spine anteriorly, but it crosses the atlanto-occipital joint between the occiput and the atlas posteriorly. So in the sagittal plane, the SCM flexes the lower, middle, upper cervical spine, but it extends the head upon the atlas at the atlanto-occipital joint. Now looking at context, well, the SCM is a border for a landmark region known as the posterior triangle of the neck. The SCM is one border, the upper trapezius is another border, and the clavicle is the third border. And we have a triangle in here that is called the posterior triangle of the neck. As a note of context, the anterior triangle of the neck is located on the medial side of the SCM. In this posterior triangle of the neck, we will have the splenius capitis that we can just barely see over here. If we had a better view posteriorly, we would see a bit of the semispinalis capitis. We have the levator scapulae muscle right here, and we have scalenes down here, and we can see some of the inferior belly of the omohyoid, one of the hyoid muscles over here. Now I'm kind of going around this structure. 
this structure is an anomaly. And how we name an anomaly is really based on what we could say it is most likely a part of. When we first saw this slip of muscle tissue here, we said, well, look, it seems to be joining into the upper trap. Maybe it's a slip of the upper trap that doesn't just go to the lateral one-third of the clavicle, but instead shoots way over toward the medial end of the clavicle, and there's a gap between. Maybe this is a fasciculus, a slip of the upper trap. We also looked at it and said, well, here is sternal head, clavicular head of SCM. We already have an anomaly with no gap in here between sternal and clavicular heads. Maybe this is another anomaly of SCM where we have a little bit of a gap and we have another clavicular head. It would really depend if we would dissect this out and see exactly where it's going. Some is going into upper trap, hence maybe we call it upper trap, or maybe it's part of SCM that's going into upper trap, but then where is it going from there? So we would need to dissect this out, and then really it could be a discussion or an argument over what we claim this anomalous slip of tissue to be. But this is unusual, this slip of tissue here. For other context, we can see the pectoralis major over in here, anterior deltoid over here, the mandible is here, the masseter muscle, a muscle of mastication of the temporomandibular joint is up over in here. We can even see the subclavius peeking out over in here. But our feature muscle is the sternocleidomastoid, sternocleidomastoid on the right side of the body.